All right, back for another WeatherXM update this time with Nikos, the CTO over at WeatherXM. Nikos, thanks for making the time today, man. Hey, Nick. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm psyched. We are both uh, the NIKs of, uh, <sighs> of this company. There's a couple of them, so it's always good to have another Nick on board. Um, let's start with this idea of the reward mechanism and proof of location. This stuff is coming. Kind of talk me through uh, why that's so important and what's going to happen. So uh, the reward mechanism is the height of our reward systems. It's the one, it's the system that distributes rewards uh, every day to the users, to the users whose weather stations provided us their data. Uh, and it's a pretty complex mechanism. Uh, lately, we've been doing quite a few additions to that mechanism that resulted in a lot of questions on Discord, uh, a lot of support tickets. So I think uh, it is important to uh, stress some points that might clear clear up the atmosphere a little bit. So um, the reward mechanism, as I said, it takes your it uh, takes input from uh, various mechanisms of our system and uh, calculates a score uh, from which your rewards result. So uh, it takes into account stuff like quality of the data that your weather station provided, the location of your weather station. Um, and whether your station uh, belongs to a cell that is full or has more or um, has doesn't have too many weather stations, so to speak, and of course the type of your weather station. Um, in the last few days, like few weeks, few weeks, uh, we deployed quite a few new stuff, promised stuff that we promised uh, quite a long time ago. And uh, the two most important of those are the quality of data mechanism and the POL mechanism. And they are important because they are the ones that directly uh, affect your rewards. They, they, actually, they are the glue between the quality of the weather station data and your uh, rewards. So, okay, that's a good way to think about it. So there's quality of data, which is what's coming from the weather station, and there's proof of location, which is saying it's coming from this place, and that glue together uh, connects to bring you to, to kind yeah. of deliver the rewards you're getting. Okay, maybe we talk through like what a great deployment is, and I know we've hit this a bunch. I know you guys are like, hey, you know, we've talked about this, but kind of walk me through what you think of as a great deployment or some of the stuff that you guys are looking for. Uh, well, a great, a, a good deployment is not... Uh, it's it's only a few things you need to take care of. Like if if there's two things you need to do is make sure there's nothing around and uh, make sure it's high enough. Uh, let's say on a pole of about two meters, and uh, that's about it. That's about it. Make sure there are no trees around. There is no like if you put it on the balcony, there is no good installation on the balcony uh, because there's obviously an obstacle at one side, and eventually. Um, not only will, will be your data useless, uh, the QoD mechanism will actually flag your data for being bad or for being not good enough and you will lose rewards. Got it. And there's, there's one thing in there I think that's an important nuance is that not only can things not be within two meters of your weather station, uh, they can't be anywhere near it in, in, the, in the kind of sideways area. So because the the way that buildings and obstacles and wind work together when this you'll create these vortices that spin off these different trees or buildings exactly or yes yes but nothing should be anywhere near your weather station either up and down or kind of left and right on on either of the two planes exactly and uh, and on installations like like uh, a roof is probably an ideal place to install your weather station but you need to make sure you don't put it near a chimney for example uh because it will affect your temperature readings so yeah. You need to make take care of that too. Get that sucker up in clean air, and I think that's that's one of the things we're seeing that um, with with folks are like, oh, it's on my whatever, it's on my balcony or it's on my roof, and it's not above the chimney or it's kind of too close to the chimney or it's near something that is emitting heat, like your kitchen vent or whatever. So it's mm -hmm. really important to get these things up in clean air. Exactly. Yeah. So cool. uh, let's. Go ahead. I, I just want to say that uh, we've been uh, very forgiving when, com when it comes to installations so far. Like our yeah. uh, quality assessment mechanism was very forgiving because we were like giving people the opportunity to start slow, not start like yeah. cutting rewards immediately. But as yeah. we progress, we are 
putting into place the new more and more mechanisms that mechanisms that will finalize bad installations. So it's very important to like I mean invest some time in a proper installation. You yeah. can always, of course, refer to our docs. Everything is there. Yeah, that's the thing, and and that's uh, if you're watching this in the community and you're one of the active members. Um, do us a huge favor and bookmark the documents where it goes to the deployment. Cause we're going to get a ton of questions about this in discord as POL comes yeah. out. And if you can help us point people to the correct part of the docs, that would be awesome. Um, on the, on the customer service side. Cause I know we already have a ton of support tickets and a lot of that stuff. You just read a couple sentences in the docs, but it's finding them. That's the hard part. So dude, let's walk through a couple of the kind of common issues that we're seeing now, uh, starting with some proof of location stuff. So walk me through, you see location not getting found. What mm -hmm. are ways to, fix that so last week um we plugged in let's say the pol mechanism for the first time into our rewarding pipeline which means uh, at the moment it evaluates daily all weather stations for their location data and generates um, notifications to the users of those weather yep. stations with owners um, of course i need to stress that at the moment um we do not penalize the users for bad uh, locations for the weather station not providing the correct location or any location at all. Uh, it, it's a, let's say a grace period where we test this mechanism, but soon enough, uh, user, uh, users will start to lose rewards for not uh, properly configuring GPS on their weather stations. Um, well, configuring is an overstatement. All you need to do, and this is the answer to this uh, location not found problem, um, in case of the M5 weather station, you need to make sure that you have an antenna, the antenna that's provided with it properly plugged in, into it on the port on the side, it's here, and uh, make sure to put the antenna like somewhere near a window. Uh, within a few minutes, you will get your uh, uh, GPS signal. In case of uh, the helium weather station, which is this one, uh, it's much easier because the GPS is integrated inside the weather station. And as long as you don't put it under a balcony, uh, it, it will eventually, like within a few hours, uh, lock its location. And um, this is regarding the users who, because we, we after uh, plugging in the build mechanism, we have run some statistics and it seems like quite a uh, few users don't have their GPS um, properly installed, so their weather stations don't send it any location at all. But then there's a small uh, population, a small amount of users that they do have their GPS properly installed, but um, their GPS sends a location different than the one that they configured when they deployed the station, which means they moved the station afterwards, after the fact, after the installation, yep. And this uh, will also result in uh, reward penalties, uh, which, and soon enough, like in the next few days, we're going to release a feature for our mobile apps where a user can relocate his station and uh, fix that. So Great. two points, location not found means your GPS doesn't work or uh, you set a different location. The first one is fix your GPS according to the docs. The second one is soon enough, you will be able to update the location on your mobile app. Okay, great. I know in my Helium location, my Helium station, when I changed locations, I mean, I changed it by 60 miles, it seemed to update automatically. Um, so that seemed like it worked for me, but it sounds like in the future, there's going to be this feature in the app where you can also mm -hmm. say, hey, I've, I've changed the location. I'm not just going to rely on this automatic thing. We had a user, we had a user to uh, taking his weather station and. Uh, and riding around in his car, like, so this won't work, obviously. Yeah, got to get those wind <laughs> measurements. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's talk about uh, dropped Wi-Fi connections. I noticed that a couple times on mine. I don't worry about it. I know you guys are just mm -hmm. uh, running through the beta stuff, and if it drops, I figure you guys are working on it. But for folks who are seeing their station where the Wi-Fi connection drops, what can they do uh, to fix that? Uh, well, thankfully, these errors, uh, because I, as I said, we monitor all the problems and uh, we noticed um, a very important, a very steep decline in problems relating to Wi Fi connections. Back yep. in the day, we had problems with uh, uh, setups where you use a Wi Fi repeater. Yep. And uh, we have like mostly solved all those problems. And 
we are in, at a point where if your M5 loses Wi-Fi connection, uh, it's most like the problem is most likely on your side and not on the M5 side. So you need to make right. sure that the, the best way to fix to see if the problem is on your side is just um, set a, a hotspot on your phone and connect your M5 to this hotspot. So if it keep it works fine, then it's probably something wrong with your Wi-Fi network. Got it. All right. Well, I'll do I'll do a little network <laughs> maintenance on my side. Um, let's see. Let's do uh, Helium stations not joining the network. I saw a couple questions about that. Mm -hmm. What's uh, what's going on there? Uh, well. Uh, this is this was more common back in the day as well. Um, the problem with the Helium network is that uh, although it's very dense, you can see it on the Helium Explorer, um, yeah. not all of these um, hotspots are actually picking up your signal. Some of them are not very, uh, let's say, ma maintained, yep. or some of them maybe are completely dead or something. So. There's yeah. a tool called Helium Mappers where you can actually see uh, the mapping of the signal, where, which is a more, uh, which is a better, let's say, um, factor, to yeah. which shows you where actually the signal exists or not. Um, so basically, what happens is your weather station transmits your data. I want to clear this up because a lot of people confuse <laughs> are confused about this. Uh, the weather station trans transmits a packet and any hotspot that's available in the area, it will pick it up. It's not under a weather station's control or anyone else's. So the first uh, weather station that's going to serve this packet uh, uh, is going to pick it up. I mean, the first, sorry, hotspot. So if this yep. hotspot happens to be a faraway hotspot or a nearby one, it's not under anyone's control. It's how the Helium network works. And uh, one common uh, question we have is, I have a Helium hotspot like five meters away, a few feet away. Why doesn't my weather station send data to that hotspot? Uh, this is a complex situation, it's a complex question, but the short answer is uh, if, if your weather station is too close, there are many factors that affect the transmission of your signal. It could be reflections, it, it could be uh, many other factors. Uh, so your signal ends up being handled by a faraway hotspot. Now, yep. if you are not joining the network, what I suggest you do is, of course, you need to do multiple tries, like try to reboot your station, try to uh, join the net. When you're joining the network, that is when your weather station is starting up, make sure you do it at, at actually at the installation site. Many people do it like in the office and then take it outside. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. That's all. Cool. We can do basic, basic kind of network hygiene stuff. Uh, yeah. Don't, don't try and join your station and your uh, in your room and then drive out to the mountain and and set up <laughs> there. And then what about this next one? Helium stations not getting a hundred percent rewards. I noticed this on mine. I don't mm -hmm. ever care because every time I look at it, it's giving me the weather, which is why I deployed the station in the first place. But I, I have noticed it doesn't seem to be doing as well as my Wi-Fi one. What's going on there? So the first release of QOD, which is responsible for uh, evaluating and uh, giving a score to your data, mm -hmm. uh, the first release was pretty strict. It was very strict, actually. We decided to do it, uh, let's say, bottom-up, start strict, and then relax it a little bit until we find the sweet spot where both the data is good and the weather, uh, that is, weather data quality is not compromised, and uh, within still remain within the specs of the weather station. Um, so the Helium weather stations, as you probably already know, they don't have the same submission interval due to being limited by the LoRaWAN network. So it's a problem inherent in the protocol. Um, uh, the short answer to this is that the M5 and the Helium were treated equally. And uh, now we, we relaxed the... Uh, let's say the rules a little bit. So the Helium weather station can also get the rewards that it uh, deserves. It's a, it's a more fair system. It's not like we uh, compromise the data. We actually, we were too strict before, like even by WMO standards, the World Meteorological Organization, we were strict even by those standards. So we made it, we relaxed them a little bit and now the Helium uh, 
both helium and M5 are treated equally. And the That's short cool. answer here is expect better rewards, expect things to improve. Got it. And that's probably a good place to to wrap this up. Is that what I've seen in the short time that I've been really involved in this project over the last month or two? And of course, I've been with the project for a long time. Um, yeah. Is that you guys are just constantly improving? And I think the the kind of answer to a lot of these questions is just make sure your deployment is good, and then just be patient. Uh, yes. On the back side, you guys, I know you're working super hard. I'd like to add the third thing that's very important, but it's slipping up everyone's attention is uh, we're on the testnet, which means uh, these tokens you receive, the rewards, they are not uh, main tokens, they are not real, um, they are not directly correlated to the rewards that you'll be go getting uh, on the airdrop when then we actually switch to mainnet. So uh, let's say cut, um, cut us some slack, we're trying to do tests, like uh, as we're supposed to do on the test network, but we're yeah. trying to do them very carefully in order to uh, not affect the rewards too much, which shouldn't be the case because these rewards are actually test rewards. Like uh, we promise that after we're done, when we move to the network, to the mainnet, when we're going to actually distribute the real rewards, we're going to be fair and uh, everyone will get their part uh, depending on how long they were, were on the network and how much they contribute. Got it. Yeah, no, that's and that's certainly what I've seen in kind of the, the behind the curtain part is that there's a ton of discussion in the company how to how to do this and to make sure yeah. that we're fair and also making sure that we're rewarding the weather stations that are providing great information. Dude, I know you don't have a ton of time. Thanks a ton for coming on. Really appreciate you making the time. We'll have to have you Thank back you. and uh, we'll you go through the rest me. of the questions we got. Great. See you.